Good morning, friends. Good morning, Charlotte. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> um, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to St. John of Jerusalem. It is a pleasure to see your faces. Um, and it is a pleasure for us to be worshipping together this morning. Um, a special welcome to any new faces that we will have in our pews. Um, and just a few uh, safety notices when it does, when we do come to communion. Um, if there will be a sanitizer station uh, where the camera is now, and if we can line up with, with the markings on the floor, that will be absolutely helpful. Um, so let's take a moment before we start. Friends, if you are able, please stand. In the name, we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds by saying together, in the bottom of page one, Almighty God, to whom you all hearts are open, all desires are open, and from whom you are open, let us the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and by the prayer of the Lord, and by the prayer of the Lord, through Christ Friends, the Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to Him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in this mercy. And so we confess together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our name, in thought, and heart, and deed. God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for our first reading. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, 
what are you doing here in life? He answered, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of those, for the Israelites have forsaken your country, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with his sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountain and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of fear sound. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophet with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return to your way on the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint as, as king over Arab. Also, you shall anoint Jeff, son of Nemesia as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mephola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Azar, devil shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of death, Elisha shall kill. Yet, I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed above, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> I invite you to remain seated and turn to the middle of our notice sheet where we're going to say it together Psalm 105. I invite you to join in for the verses in the book. Oh, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Rejoice in the praise of his holy name. Let the hearts of them rejoice who seek the Lord. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. He is the Lord of our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Please. 
Lord Jesus, we are facing one of the biggest storms the world has ever put in our way. Help us to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and the hearts to understand your message for us today. Amen. I've always been amazed by how relevant the scriptures chosen for each day seem to be so spot on and relevant to the world today. Six months out of seminary and I was preaching at Calvary Cathedral in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It was the Sunday following the death of John F. Kennedy on Friday. And the scriptures for that Sunday were absolutely spot on. I didn't have to change the scriptures to preach on that day. They were absolutely meant for that assassination. The Gospel of Matthew could not be more relevant in light of the violent storm facing the world today with this dreadful, life-threatening coronavirus. Our story unfolds at the Sea of Galilee which was noteworthy for its sudden and extremely violent storms. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. When the evening came, the boat was a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waters and the waves because of the wind. This is a story which focuses on the storm 
more than on Jesus simply walking on the water. And you and I can identify all too well because you and I are in the midst of one of the most violent storms to hit the world today, a pandemic known as COVID-19. It's more like a tsunami rather than a mere storm. During the fourth watch of night, Jesus went out to them. When they saw Jesus, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried out in fear. Now let's look more closely at the symbolism in this story. The fourth watch was about 3 to 5 a.m. in the morning, meaning they had been rowing in a storm for eight to nine hours. They were totally exhausted. And when they saw Jesus the Christ, they were terrified. Jesus the Christ always comes to you in the storms of your life. And it's a reminder of Isaiah 43 when he wrote, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Jesus the Christ comes to you when you least expect it. It's when you feel all hope has gone that Jesus the Christ appears. Why, you might ask, did the disciples not recognize Jesus? The answer is, they were simply not looking for him. Had they been waiting in faith, they would have known Jesus instantly. Instead, they jumped to the false conclusion that Jesus' appearance was that of a ghost. The point is this, fear and faith cannot live in the same heart. For fear frequently blinds your eyes to the presence of Christ. You and I and the world around are simply terrified by this coronavirus that hit us like a bolt of lightning out of the blue. One minute, Joan and I were in South Africa enjoying a lovely holiday. Two weeks after we got back, we were in lockdown. Easter, Pentecost, Trinity Sunday were called off for the first time in my life. Indeed, churches were closed for over 16 weeks. What frightens you the most about this pandemic? That you might suddenly get it without any warning? That you might be made redundant from your job and not have any income to support your family? That you're not able to meet your mortgage payments because you're on furlough and you're not getting full payment? That your children might not return to school in September? That you'll be cooped up this winter in a flat with no garden to retreat to? That you can't visit and be with your loved ones? The list is endless. But in the midst of all this uncertainty and fear, Jesus the Christ comes to you and says to you, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Jesus knows what you have need of. Not what you want, what you desire, but what you have need of. How willing are you to put all your trust, all your hope, and all your faith in Jesus the Christ? to be with you throughout this pandemic until a vaccine is discovered that will protect you from this virus. And never forget the words of Jesus to his disciples. They were terrified and cried out in fear. 
But Jesus immediately said to them, as Jesus says to you and me this morning, take courage. Take courage. Do not be afraid. Now you are Christ's disciples today. So hopefully you'll be able to respond in the same way they did. And with a loud shout proclaim, truly, you are the Son of God. Now let me hear you say it this morning. All together now, truly, you are the Son of God. I didn't hear it. Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Truly, he is the Son of God. In the storms of our life, let us stand together to affirm our faith. On the bottom of page five, we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God is faithful to us through all the storms of life, yet our faith in God is so very small. <clears throat> faithful God, we pray for the gift of deeper faith in you, so that we trust you in a way that alters our dependence of everything else and allows us clearer vision as to the direction and the role of the church. Remind us that it is your church and not ours, your work, your power, and your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, as we call to mind the stormy areas of our world, the raging and the insecurity, the confusion and the bewilderment, the restlessness and fear. Let your calming and reassuring presence be sensed and recognized, bringing peace and goodness, righteousness and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, come to us in the storms of life, when we let one another down, mishandle opportunities, and come to the end of your strength our patience and bless us with the love that never lets us down. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Faithful God, we place into your love and keeping all those who have died, knowing their dependence on you and your limitless mercy. We thank you for them and their gifts to the world and ask that we may in our turn Come to you across the waters of death and live in your company forever. And today, Lord, we bring before you the names of those who have died in the last few months. June Harvey, Elizabeth Pereira, Pat Heiser, Debbie Marlin, Stephen Coley, 
Clara Sutro, Martha Wakeman, and Molly Wood. We want to remember those whose anniversaries fall around this time. John William Goodwin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, whose promises stand sure forever, we thank you for your patience with us and your refusal to give up on us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I repeat, do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always, always with you. And also with you. Friends, let us offer one another a sign of our peace.
Eucharistic prayer is now on page 19, is what I do live to vote. Eucharistic prayer D, page 19. Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest, make yourself known in the breaking of the prayer. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up the hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned toward your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. The word goes out to call us home, to the city of the angels singing the praise. We join with them in heaven's song, saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna and Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord, so sad in the eyes. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the dogs, Jesus came as your life. With signs of faith and words of hope, Jesus touched untouchable with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned. On the night Jesus was betrayed, Jesus came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. Jesus blessed you, Father. For the food. Jesus took the bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then again gave thanks for the wine. This is my blood shed for you all. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our song story. This is our song of the Christ. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which Jesus died to set us free. Defying death, Jesus rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now, that these gifts may, be, may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation may worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let us pray together the only prayer our Savior Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, be thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The body is the human, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread, the share of the body of Christ.
Take this in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed upon him in your heart by faith with life's day. friends once again. Uh, we are almost at the end of our service and I have a few notices to give. Uh, this afternoon we will have our Zoom church at 3 p.m. Uh, if you need the details just let me know and I can give them to you if you wanted to join in with the extended fellowship of those who are still unable to come to church There will also be evening prayer this evening at 4 p.m. And this will be here in the church. Um, and I will be leading that. Um, and then throughout the week, the morning prayer will resume from Tuesday. And we take that to Saturday. 
prayer for Andrew and his family as they come to the end of their holiday and make their way back to us. Um, and Andrew will begin um, his youth duties on Tuesday. So if there's anything you do need, uh, you can contact him or myself on Monday. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our fantastic musical support this morning. They have been tremendous, and I'm sure that you will all agree. The rendition of Ave Maria was fantastic and superb. Uh, so thank you to Victoria, to Sophie, and to Jonathan, who were our musicians this morning. Thank you. Friends, go in peace to love and serve you. 